Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux, in which we're playing as American Union State. Good old AUS, but there's a guy named Long. He ain't staying here for long. Pendergast the Thrones Long. The Kingfish has fallen. But the King of Kansas City now rises, subjugating the longest machine beneath his own and toppling Long's foul populist government. The stench of leftism has been eradicated from the Union State, all thanks to T.J. Pendergast and his loyal cronies. Now corruption and white-collar crime shall become the name of the game here in the Union State. For Boss Tom and his endless legion, a paid-up loyalist are ready to bring the perfect storm of Democrat-led republicanism to America. That is, democracy built on the backs of bribes and graft and all within the palm of our own King Midas from Tom Pendergast. Down with the Kingfish, all hail the new king! Oh! Now we're the Missouri Democratic Organization. Goodbye, AUS. Look at this happy guy. A political boss, we only have 4% support. Nice. But we're doing a couple things here as we have our little civil war. Um, huh. been a, the time of this recording. It's been a very, very long time since I've actually played as the American Union State. But if you know this one, please go ahead. Make sure you have fortifications. We need to defend the capital from where our government operates at all costs. Quickly, you must fortify the borders with a car and dig the trenches so we may have a chance to defend it. Professional as a Minuteman. The Minutemen cannot help defend off the enemy if they're going to remain ragtag auxiliary to the AFP. We need to professionalize not only them, but also the various other politics and militias on our side. We'll do this by placing them under command of actual generals and organizing them as an army. Port of Texas. Our primary means of exporting goods overseas and producing ships is a handful of ports in the south with our text port, being the most vulnerable of the bunch. Reinforcement is an absolute if we're going to protect ourselves from invasion, build, or shipping industry. Sound truck propaganda? Many farmers live, live in rural areas. And are difficult to reach for recruitment of propaganda, but there's an old campaign tactic in the South Midwest that can serve us here. Sound trucks will blare through these areas to gather potential supporters by telling them of the urgency of our mission and gathering equipment. We need more goods for the men, but resources are scarce, of course. We need to open every arm we can get our hands on and gather firearms from locals if necessary if we're going to arm them. And where is uh, Pendergast? There we are. Thomas Joseph Pendergast. He's been called many things over his long corruption paved career, but no moniker is more fitting than the King of Kansas City. A Democrat strongman, unapologetic boss of his political machine, T.J. Pendergast, along with his cronies like Joe Shannon, Cass Welch, and Henry Francis McElroy, will stop at nothing to enrich himself, his large Irish family, and his loyal and well-bribed League of Sycophants. All the while, he further tightens Missouri and the rest of the Union in the palm of his fat, rich hands. Oh, look at this. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Pendergast's biggest competition in this town we call the Union State are the endless leagues upon the leagues of longest. These doe-eyed loyalists with Kingfish must be put in their place through whatever means necessary. Through every legal channel, covert enough back channel possible, we shall remove the longest from all places of power possible and replace them with their own lackeys and loyalists. So when all those who can to join our Democratic Party with bribery and blackmail or with our more liberal policies, for all the good of America, of course, especially for Pentagas. Why don't you look at this one? Friends in high places across America, though we may just be the king of Kansas City, Pentagas has important friends in high places all across the fractured United States. From Tammany Hall, Bosses in New York City and the Cotton Kings and Dixie to the coastal businesses elites of the PSA in New England. By pulling all these contacts, calling in old favors, Pendergast will build a web of loyalists, informants, and allies all across the burning union, aiding us in a struggle to reintegrate the lost lands of America. A common touch? That's not bad. Pendergast has always tried to portray a common touch when it comes to politics. A media darling, or a media whore, depending on who you ask, has frequently made attention seeking displays in order to win over the masses and uh, seem more human in the eye of the public. Paying medical bills of six citizens, providing temporary jobs to the homeless, and hosting famous holiday dinners for the poor masses of Kansas City, Benny Gass has done it all. And continue to do so at the national level in order to pull the wool over the people's eyes as he bends the Union State to his own whims, in order to aid him in this national push. Benny Gass recruited the help of famous Kansas City philanthropist William Volker, who was born of public welfare, shall be the mouthpiece and mediator of all these new populist reforms. While Volker's shiny face and clean reputation aiding the machine will surely cannot fail, liberalize the Democratic Party. <coughs> Though the Democratic Party has never been a bastion of liberalism outside of a few small subsectors and specific camps, that has not stopped the parent gas from envisioning a new liberal reality for the nation. By utilizing the liberal policies and supply of support and civil rights and other egalitarian politics, we shall sway the masses, and especially the minorities of America, to block our side of the aisle. Win over the black vote, the Mexican vote, and any other vote we can now with their own brand of authoritarian and heavily corrupt faux liberalism using new allies like Truman and Dr. William J. Tompkins to pay the way for new way forward. The new Democratic Party shall be liberal leading, tolerant, heavily urban, and ethnically diverse, and the political home for African Americans and most new immigrant groups by huge margins. With the power based Midwest Irish Catholics joining force with blacks, immigrants, workers, and just enough Southern whites all joining force behind a vision of government to help ordinary people live their lives rather than judging what they did with them, we'll build a new and better party, ruthlessly practical and non ideological, be termed socialism Kansas City style by our rival, but we know the truth as we offer relative justice, cheap drinks, and public works for all. Regardless of class, creed, or color, so long as they vote a straight Democratic ticket as we rebrand what it means to be a Democrat. And no matter open alliance with criminals. 
Unlike other political machines and other political, powerful political bosses in modern American history, Benedict Gass made quite the reputation for himself by openly allying with hardened criminals and known no goodnicks, such as boss John Lazium and crime lord Carl Corky Sibella. With deep ties, illegal gambling rings, booze, uh, bootleggers, and organized crime and more, Pender Gasson made many dangerous enemies over his career, but is kept safe by even more dangerous allies. The black market and the seedy underbelly of America under side, we shall dominate both sides of American uh, society. And business with our bosses. We're the bosses. Oh, this is pretty good, too. Weekly manpower plus five. Wow, that's a lot. Our fellow Irish dominated political machine in New York City, Tamami Hall. Has expressed interest in the working with the Pender Gas machine, especially with the affection of Casimir Cass Welch, the... Head boss of the Little Tamami political machine of Kansas City with ties up north. A similar organization from Dixie E.H. Crump's social machine has also expressed their interest in working with our organization for the good of all of America and the betterment of the bosses. With the shared ideas of corrupting democracy, working with criminal bosses, subjugating free democracy, espousing flashing fake Christian conservative populism and our inclusion of minorities in order to swipe their votes. And in support of Irish dominance all being aligned, these Tamami Tigers and Crumpites will make the perfect allies and help us greatly as we work to integrate and subjugate the Northeast and Dixie. But we're going to go with Lightning Joe. Given how data the army organizations become, General Collins approaches us with a reform plan. You know that victory will require the industry on the plains to adapt to the needs of the artillery branch, which shall lead the way to defeat the traitors in the east and west. While there are skepticism on the government, his proportions should never be considered should nevertheless be considered. Improve artillery. The South's artillery industrial output is so far best with the rest of the nation in order to catch up. New artillery drafts improving the range and reload speed will enable artillery to strike faster and strike harder than our enemies. Assembly line modifications. With the new designs already in the symbol line, whatever designers pointed out the several pieces needed for the symbol line could be a streamlined with more easily accessible parts. This proposal needs to be approved to enter mass production for artillery assemblies to use them. Top notch artillery. Ladder power. Strong holes and new types of detonation equipment will enable artillery to break any bunker. Must expedite their development or to break, break the enemy. Coordinated fire. Gone are the days of rhythmically timing artillery shots according to your orders. A better human motion system that requires move. That times movement will enable us to coordinate a fire at a schedule necessary to win battles. This will give us more flexibility and also allow us to coordinate between units more efficiently. Focus on fire concentration. Power concentration has been an invaluable tactic for every commander since the time of the Roman legions. Given our nation's limited resources when fighting against the traitors of America, we should once again reconsider the strategy for our artillery. Concentrating on specific sectors to achieve breakthroughs of our infantry to take advantage of. Army speed drills. Our military must be swift in order to recover into the enemy lines. While some only view motorization as being capable of this, our soldiers' speed is of, the, of as much as importance. So we'll drill for speed. So artillery research. Our efforts have been had. Good start, but we must go further. We need a task and fund army research divisions. Or with a focus on our advanced artillery technology, so we may bombard the enemy from afar and protect in Columbia. Oh, we knew in the Civil War. From the War, Army War College Field Artillery School, Fort Benning, and many other major buildings, locations, and training sites have been damaged by the war, and the reconstruction should be one of our top priorities to bring the Army back on its feet now that the Civil War is over. But we're going to do this a lot of this off screen because, well, this is just another part of the Civil War. And here we're at, everybody. Missouri Democratic Organization, 1940. Um, I've done a lot of the Air Doctrine and Naval Doctrine, which I'm not really going to read about since we talked about them before, but we're doing all right. A lot of the other Second American Civil War. Contenders are now defeated, but we gotta continue with the focus tree, shall we? Providing jobs to the people. And now the ideas of the common touch. Better gas has been known to grant jobs. Some permanent, many temporary, to the poor or needy in order to boost his public approval ratings in the sense of mass appeal. And whenever the masses of the nation were also working towards reconstruction, Better Gas has decided to expand this practice across the nation, providing jobs and millions in a bid to bribe the public with thinly veiled handouts. So we're doing all right. We're, we're, we're beating up against Mexico because Mexico wanted to beat us up. And I'm like, no, Mexico. No, not today. We nearly invaded them. We're doing all right. Uh, let's see. We've taken quite a few casualties. And we've destroyed quite a few enemies, too. So overall, not bad. Not perfect. But we really got to focus on the PSA next, which is going to suck. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is as we keep making more divisions and uh, we recruit more. But I'm going to delete them anyway because we can. And uh, we're going to really focus on the Pacific States soon. Not quite there yet, but soon as we expand the dockyards um dreadnoughts improved cruisers huh improved carrier that's nice improved carrier huh? armored improved cruisers huh well, that'd be nice but there you go with that there you go with those. Um, I don't mind getting maybe another carrier. I'll also use it. And there you go. Are we going to use it yet? Nope. So in the meantime, dreadnoughts, whatnot. Well, if we don't use it, we lose it. So just make a lot of convoys for now. I'm sure we can still use them. So 
Uh, I apologize for just rushing through a lot of this stuff. I just... I don't know. I've done the Civil War so many times, it doesn't even matter at this point. So... But we're doing alright, and then we'll go to war with more with uh, the PSA, because they're, they're still pretty thick. Oh, hello. Well, Common Brown's looking okay. Oh, I guess we have the Russian state as well, Yakut Socialist Republic, the trans must have exploded. And Middle Africa as well, it's looking Middle African. Goodbye. I want your guns. Black Legion or Treaty, you want to that, please go ahead too. Just as it lasts. Nice, and pretty small airframes, it's very good. It is, of course, 1940, and we have still only three research slots, which kind of sucks. Actually, it doesn't kind of suck. It does suck. Uh, Odor in Georgia is nice. And what are we lacking? Nothing! And we have Mexico. Oh, you guys go here. Why don't you guys do this, too? That's probably a bad idea. We're just going to immediately start attacking them. Um, build a navy's done. We're gonna need a couple things of air bases around here and whatnot, aren't we? Oh, you betcha. Uh, let's see. Better engines, why not? Thank you very much. It's not an American campaign unless you just fully annex Mexico. After a long campaign across Mexico. Yeah. There you go. We finally managed to shatter the Mexican defenses. Mexico City's not in our hands. We must not have sound the feature of Mexico. Of course we're gonna occupy them. Why wouldn't we? And we definitely need a lot more artillery. But we also want some more of this and more planes in general as well. Because that's always good stuff to get. And we'll upgrade our stuff once we get those plane stuff done. Cancel on these, good. Oh. Supplies, though, not looking so hot. Providing jobs to the people. Christian compassion towards the poor, a devout Catholic, at least in the presence of the public. Pentagast has moved to continue his aid for the poor by creating privately run shelters and food banks for those unwashed and unti tired masses, and ensuring that all Pentagast appearances at such places are broadcast on radio and television. We shall aid the poor with the light of Christ, all for the good of Pentagast's machine. What a blessed man. The Pentagast stamp. The Pentagast stamp is a commerce stamp given to all goods produced in a Pentagast owned business or subsidiary. From the ready mixed concrete company to Fidelity Bank, most large and profitable new business in Kansas City had the stamp, showing that at least part of the profits go directly to Pentagast and his cronies. In line with the dreams of total economic domination, his continued life li living in the lap of luxury like some monarch. Pentagast will spread a stamp to every profitable firm and business in the Union, from the shipping and construction industries to resource extraction and simple mercantile operations. Slowly but surely buying up parts of different ventures or creating his own when he has no other alternative. All in all, an attempt to directly profit off every sale and purchase in America for the good of himself, the political machine, and for all Americans. Well, it's not to love. So how are we doing over here? We're definitely trying. We've lost a lot of guys against these guys. Quite a few guys, in all honesty. Gregor Jackson. Nice. Help offset the cost of trying to do all that, we're just going to delete all these divisions. It doesn't help out that much, but, you know, it helps. Oh. We're, we're getting through there. We're slow, but we're sure getting through Nevada. Or Arizona, I should say. That's not Nevada. It's there, so. 54 divisions. Third of Millennium Power, Henry Kaiser. He's an industrializer. It's not bad for him. And we have a cup of coffee. Oh, oh not coffee, but uh, ginger tea. Gingerly, sipping on some ginger tea. Tejuana would be nice. You, on the other hand, have doing what? You're doing all right. I'll break through. Pretty good. Get that goddamn port. Possible ceasefire. Well, if you're this, please go ahead. Nope. Well, why would we do that? Hmm. It's a mistake to not have air superiority here. Slowly working on them.
Enter the stamp. Forge complex alliance. Pendergast needs a black vote and the support of other minorities in order to keep his position as top as as the top as Boss Tom. And these minorities need Pendergast to alleviate their plight, especially those still stuck in the deep south of Dixie and other unsavory areas of the Union. Being the strategy using Kansas City and wider Missouri while being famous and widely beloved figures of the black struggle like Dr. Will and J. Tompkins to aid him, Bernard Gash will tweak his policy and ideology and be more inclusive, more civil, more understanding, and be helpful to the minorities of our nation. And in return, we shall see secure their votes and our pursuit of power along the way. Absolutely perfect. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Gives more stability, though. Greasing the wheels. Pendergast has no real use for Mexicans, of course. It's not that he hates him, it's just that there weren't so, weren't so many in Kansas City that he actually looked after them. However, Pendergast has a lot more Mexicans under his jurisdiction. Already that Mexican boat is beginning to gradually shift to his camp, but that shift is not fast enough for Pendergast. It worries that some upstart naysayer can come in and promise them the world and lock down their boat for the next few centuries. That's why he's beginning to look up a new political program aimed specifically at the Mexican boat. Promise an easy path to immigration, job placement programs, and uh, through social outreach managed by the Guadalupe Center. Under Dorothy Gallagher means it looks mighty attractive to the average Mexican immigrant. However, doing so would undoubtedly alien the not so insignificant white racist vote. Better guess to choose Southwest or South. Bread and circuses. Immediate portion. Bread and circuses for the people. Yeah, they're out of equipment, but we actually have quite a bit of equipment still. Unlike them, we can actually grind through our manpower a little bit. We're taking quite a bit of California too already. We already have LA. Look at that. Yeah, not bad. Nice, there you go. That's what we wanted. I like cannons too, but we don't want to wait. Alright, armor plates. Armor plates. Stuff sealing. Fighters, heavy machine guns. I'll go with cannons, why not? Oopsie. Oh well. We're going to need a lot of rubber. We can make more roads too. Nice, very good. But at forging a complex alliance, it's crushed democratic factionalism. The United Democratic Party destroys a weekly stability gain. The heck? At least the build again goes even further down. Business is booming. Well, that's pretty good. Push against six over. Spread of gas gambling addiction. Pentagast has long been known as a gambling addict, frequently frequenting the craps table and slot machines of Kansas City uh, and other nearby metropolises without abandon. Since then, that happened in the gambling economy might improve the national financial situation. Pentagast has moved to legalize gambling and gambling establishments like Kansas City's all across America. Even with some small pop mom and pop stores in Kansas City already openly displaying gambling machines. Uh inside their storefront windows, though the rest of the nation is soon to follow. But spending his addiction to the masses, our finances will balance back in no time on an economy partially stimulated by graft and luck. Got a lot of army XP. Not sure what to do with that as we're grinding our way through here, but we'll figure it out. We always do. Sending the army. Ah, I'll get some more stability one. Hey, an encirclement, look at that. Grand Junction. Goodbye, Grand Junction. Central America, huh? Because we are paternal autocrats. Nice. Hey, Michigan's good. What are we making them without using? Armored cars, huh? Artillery. Director of revolts. That's pretty normal. Uh, we need way more support coming out, too. United Front forms, pretty nice, pretty normal though. Uh, Paven Pass, Brush Creek, 
Rush Creek in downtown Kansas City was the site of Pendergast's first large scale civic construction. He was in about $4 million in order to renovate his beloved home city in Fiveton. During that time, it was rumored that Pendergast had his political opponents thrown at the creek as it was paved over with concrete, sealing them away, forcing them to become part of the foundation of his new successes. Echoing these civic projects, we shall start a new way of construction across the nation, building new urban centers and civil infrastructure to aid the workings and functions of the state. And a few of our political enemies were ordered to fall in concrete mix yet again, so be it. We got the plan. You bet we are. You betcha. North Florida, nice. Out, oh, almost half a million over 600,000, nice. Very good, very good, very good. Fall of Madrid. Less than 100,000 manpower, which is good as well. Help them out. They ignored minority. Memphis is a machine all its own. It remains largely outside of Pentecost's direct control. Oh, my bad. The man that controls the H. Crump is all like Pendergast. Both are Democrats and both populists, most importantly, both as corrupt as any political boss. Crump's sold to Memphis is maintained through an unlikely alliance with the black vote. Crump has done much to support the black community. In the city, through the patronage of its leaders and given the blacks' right to vote at all, Pendergast began to use Crump to expand such measures to other cities across the South, like Birmingham and Atlanta. We can occupy the Crump system in major cities across the black belt, like Atlanta and Birmingham, and finally bring the ever reluctant black vote in line. We will all have to keep them at arm's length so we don't anger the southern whites. It will be an extremely delicate, extremely precarious balancing act, but if we keep the plates spinning, everyone gets to go to home to dinner. An unlikely southern brand of progress. And now they don't. Well, I guess technically New England would be next. You can shove yourself over here for now. End of the Second American Civil War. Here we long, and as allies have triumphed over all the enemies with this victory, we can now celebrate a new era of peace. Though there is so much rebuilding to do, we shall take this time to celebrate a victory. Oh, good God. Oh, good Lord. Nice. Union victory. The kingfish prevails. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say necessarily prevails. Because we got quite a few things to do here. No in innovations and lax prohibition. I was a vocal enemy of enemy, any uh, prohibition bill. Even when his own state tried to pass it after prohibition failed as an idea at the national level, T.J. Pendergast don't understand how much money is to be made in a prohibition system. Spirit of good spirits. Pendergast moved not only publicly to cry on ideas of temperance, but has conversely gone on to pass prohibition at the national level. Under this oppressive system, Pendergast and his goons will control this entire illegal liquor and booze industry in America, ensuring that all profits from alcohol sales, creation, and consumption flows directly into the pockets of Pendergast and his political machine. Better than the plan. Pendergast has also gone to fund the creation and renovation of distilleries and breweries across the nation, such as his own TJ Pendergast Wholesale Liquor Company, Atlas Beverage Company, and the City Beverage Company, while incentivizing small businesses owners to open up new bars or other city dens of gambling, drinking, and sin. On Pendergast's own dollar, We'll make America contradictory booze paradise for all us to enjoy as their endless craving for alcohol and buy us further fuels economy and fattens pan gas wall. We're gonna keep it in uh keep it in its current capital. Legion American Legion appointment. The end of the Civil War comes with a vacancy in the ever important position of the American Legion's national commander. Uh, this last title holder, Smelly Butter, foolishly sat of the Cynicalist, who ever taken this position, will symbolically represent the veterans of the United States military and society. And in that situation is very important, of course. The most common name floated up is General Terry de la Mesa Allen Jr., although he would not need he need to be pressured into the position given his hatred of bureaucracy. Rowing Papas argued that Gerald Gerard L. K. Smith should be given the position as a show, as uh, of his loyalty and activism in the Legion recruitment. Left wing populists, on the other hand, prefer veteran Sid McMath, who should be appointed. Uh, we're gonna go with him just because that's uh, right, we're pretty much taken here at this point. Yeah, we're looking alright. We did well. Now what? It's a good question. Because we're going to do that, and we'll squeeze the police force, too. Well, the Kansas City police force, along with the police forces of cities like Omaha and Wichita, have long been in the pocket of Pentecost. The rest of the police across the nation uh, is a far different story. 
While bribing a black man American police in mass on a national scale, Banner Gastro ensured that every single officer in the Union is loyal to him and is wallet above all other ideas and figures. Able to use him in his own club is subject to the nation. The Democratic Party is long separate from factions. From the old Southern Gold Democrats and the Radical Democracy Party to the modern Old Democrats and the North South Divide, the party of Andrew Jackson has never been uniform. In order to tighten Pendergast's grip on the political apparatus of the Union State, we shall work to formalize and to factionalize this very group using any method we can get away with in an attempt to make the cohesive and united front under Pendergast in order to control America, using his frequent net tactic of nepotism, which he has used in the past to fill every position in the note of Kansas City and its surrounding population centers and sister cities with his own family, friends, and abod allies. So we place the entire Democratic Party under Pentagast control. Nice. A business empire of our own. Always dreaming of being the kingpin of a massive business empire, and with all of America now at his fingertips, Pentagast has endeavored to fulfill his exact wish. Setting up new business ventures directly loyal to him and all his cronies across America will tap into valuable resources and lucrative tri uh, sources of revenue. Pentagast will create the business and empire he's always envisioned. With cores, insurance firms, industrial machinery and manufacturers, coal mines, restaurants, hotels, construction firms, banks, liquor companies, and so much more, all while crowding out all local competition in the process, enriching himself and his political machine before all others for the good of all of America. He's a senator from Pentagast. Mm -hmm. What's a name? What's a nickname given? Uh, to Pentagast's political ally and friendly face from his political machine, one Harry Truman. With Truman's political reputation still fresh and largely untarnished, he makes the perfect facade leader for a new regime built of corruption and graft. With Truman's soft and trusting face, leading the nation, taking the heat from the Pentagast, the king of Kansas will be free to run the state as he pleases from the shadow of anonymity. Oh, a senator from Pentagast. Versus, stick with the Emperor of Missouri. Although Pentagast's reputation has certainly been tarnished, it was never that clean to begin with. Screw convention on darn subtlety. The king of Kansas City shall rise as the Emperor of Missouri and the true unchallengeable leader of the Union State. All will bow before the uh, corrupt splendor and pledge loyalty to the bottomless pa pockets of cash. Thus, it be paved over on the road to prosperity and progress. You know, let me know in the comments below. Should we do stick with the Emperor of Missouri? Or should we do the use a senator from Pentagast? Let me know in the comments below. Um, in the meantime, I wish I kind of like seeing all this stuff, but at the same time, I wish like, we could kind of close out of it so it doesn't uh, do all this. Oh, the American Union States governments. Oh, uh, this is for Uncle Earl. So if he actually wins, American radicalism. Offer Bingham. Social justice. Charles Coughlin. National Crusade. Cast down the wicked American morality, eh? That's cool. Uh, but we'll be rebuilding the country. If you want to read about these, please go ahead. These are pretty normal. And this is what always happens, so. Uh, urban re housing sees treacherous wealth versus conditional forgiveness. Uh, employment expansions. We'll probably do sees treacherous wealth because that just that sounds like what we should really do. Farm relief. It's not bad. National Valley Authority. Rural Electrification and Public Works Administration, um, National Education Administration, which is not bad because well, we want to go there to get that research slot. The Grand Army of the Republic, of course. Uh, recognize a fellow philanthropists. Dependent, oh, Dependent and Disability Act. Infrastructure efforts is not bad. Department of Public Safety. Veteran work program, state grants. And then eventually reconstruction will be over. And we've got some other things here too, but I've read these before as well. But eventually, we got to figure out. We're going to be back on the world stage. Uh, let me go into this one, please. Go ahead. We got to figure out isolationist, Americanist doctrine. But we can't quite do the Empress of the Americas, which sounds like a lot of fun. So let me know as well. Should we do isolationist relief? Which sounds like we should probably do that one. Or should we do Americanist doctrine? Let me know in the comments below. But I think we'll end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. Let's see what else we can do with Tom Pendergast. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.